Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today, we're going to take a look at making from scratch our own inverted V that's a multi band antenna. It will cover 40, 20, and 10. Now, as it turns out, 15 is the uh, uh, third harmonic of 40 meters, so we're going to get 15 for free. But you'll see how that goes as we do it. This video was originally put together as a supplemental video for my column in QST called Ask Dave. And this was the October edition, but I thought, you know, this is an interesting video. I'd like all of you to see it because in it we are going to construct an AV antenna. It's going to be a multi-band antenna, and I'm going to show you how to do it extremely cheaply. What we did here was using far less than $100 worth of materials. It's just a very easy thing to do. So let's take a look, first of all, at a drawing that I put in QST. And then second, we'll start with the calculations to put some real values to those. And then we'll go through some photographs of the uh, construction process. And then I've got some uh, SWR diagrams. I've got uh, some receive testing, comparing it to another antenna. And then um, I've got some FT8 contacts that I made on it. So this is something, remember, that you can do. As long as you've got some high point, you can hold it up in the middle, 20 to 30 feet high. Let's jump into uh, Charter 2 and then into the photographs. And then let's see what the results are. Now, this is the picture that was in QST. There are no dimensions. So my assistant and I decided we would build one. Here's our calculations. It's strictly 468 feet in, divided by F in megahertz gives you the length. And this assumes a 95% propagation factor in a wire, which is a, a good assumption. So 66 feet, 33 feet, 16 and a half feet total. And what we decided to do was make an antenna that looks like this. It's got uh, the wires are run along each other. We've got a longer spacer here and here to handle all three wires. And then here and here, a uh, little bit shorter uh, to, to handle the two wires. So the long elements, 40 meters, then 20 meters in the middle, 10 meters at the top. Okay, okay let's uh, see how we made the thing. Uh, we start with my assistant. It was Aiden, who is using this a white stranded wire from Home Depot. These are the pieces of plastic that he's cut with this pipe cutter right here. We could not find my pipe slicer. Uh, I've got one, I just don't know where it is. So we did what uh, we did our best with what we had, which is normal. So here he's drilling the end holes and one of the longer ones drilling the middle hole in here. This hole is sized to be enough for the wire to slip through, but if you put a little bit of a kink in the wire, it'll keep the thing from slipping through. Um, here is uh, Aiden uh, wrapping the ends of the wires together. He's pulled off several inches off the end of each wire. This is the part that will go on the insulator. Now, what we did was we first tinned those you can see our little insulators down here. I used a torch, as that's a pretty thick piece of wire. Now, I will tell you that the torch was too much energy. We should have uh, ramped it down quite a bit, but it worked. Now, here is the SO239. We decided to do that so we could use my standard test coax to connect to it. There is not much room in here. This does not go down in a hole. It just sits right there in that little tray. So we taped this down. My assistant held his hand on it with a um, kitchen hot pad uh, so that it wouldn't hurt his hands as that thing got hot. And uh, we got that all taken care of. You can see it right here. It's all soldered in nicely. The other wire is soldered to 
one of the four holes. And this is our electric fence insulator. This one goes vertically, this one goes horizontally around a common center. And this is after we attached it. So you see the center is attached to one side and the shield is attached to the other. Is that best practice? I guess best practice is a ballon of some kind, but this worked really well. So we didn't need that, okay? So this is what he's gonna take out. He's got the three wires on each end of this. And he's out there measuring a distance from our new 30 foot test uh, mast. And we're gonna get it so that it's, uh, we're trying for 120 degrees at the center. It ended up with the sloping about 90, but it works. So here he is tying the end of the 40 meter element to the uh, rope that we're going to use and then that rope was attached around the stake. Uh, notice I put a little safety slab on top of this. It's a two-foot stake and uh, then you get a picture here of the rope. It wraps several times around the stake and it comes out here for a simple knot. So let's look at the test results uh, captured with my Nano VNA. Here's 40 meters, 20 meters, and 10 meters. Note that we seem to have a freebie on 15 meters. That's because this thing is resonant on 40, and this is the third harmonic of uh, 40 meters. Now let's get a little bit closer look at each band. In the 40 meter band, we do get down to one to one SWR here, and it's under two to one across the entire band, which is excellent. This is uh, 20 meters. It resonates a little low here. We could have taken a couple inches maybe off each end of the 20 meter and moved this one over here, but it was under two to one, so we stopped while we were ahead. This is the 10 meter one. Uh, it's not fantastic. Uh, you could move this around in the band if you wanted to get, say, this part down here to the bottom where most people are working. And so the antenna is too short, so you would have to lengthen it, but we've wrapped some wire back so you can do that. Now here's our 15 meter freebie. Uh, it is under three to one across the band under two to one for part of it. It's not perfect, but you can tune it on 15 meters and work just fine. Here is a listening test uh, using my uh, software defined radio called the SDR Play RSP1A, Radio Signal Processor 1A. Okay, and the software is SDR Uno, which is SDR Play's house software. And I cut the picture in half so that you could look up here at the new tri-band antenna and down here at my reference step IR, big IR, which is a vertical with lots and lots of radials, very nice antenna. Now I'm comparing horizontal antenna with a vertical antenna, which is not fair, but I don't have another horizontal antenna to compare it with. Also, these two snapshots were taken one minute and 45 seconds apart. And the reason for that is the process to go through and capture the screen on this one, and then back out and do the processes to set up capturing the screen for this one, take a minute and 45 seconds. Now, I do have an SDR Duo, and I will need to hook that up so I can snap these at the same time. I'll get that set up. Okay, here is some FT8 on the new antenna. Uh, pretty good results here. Uh, in some points, I receive a higher um, report than the one that I sent, and in other cases, the other way around. So that's pretty normal. There's eight contacts here. Um, one in Canada, uh, the others uh, spread across uh, the Western United States pretty well. Okay, so let's conclude with one last look at the antenna. We have the 10 meter element here, 
with a little wire bent back so you can adjust that. You can adjust the 20 meter element a bit and you can adjust the 40 a bit. And we never did adjust the 10. We adjusted the 20 twice and the 40 twice. And uh, if you did another round of adjustments, you could get this thing even closer. Now it's interesting to note up here at the top, the thing is actually held up by the coax. I've got a rope around the coax that tightens on it. That way we're not putting a lot of uh, strain on that little SO239, but actually it's holding up the uh, coax right there. So there you have it, an inverted V that you can build yourself. It's multi-band, 40, 20, 10. And as it turns out, the 15 meter band comes along for free. Can you add other bands as part of the fan? Yes, absolutely you can. And I've shown you an easy way of doing that too with those plastic partitions so that really you're only tying two ends down rather than multiple ends. Now I will note that the way that this antenna is held uh, with the lines underneath it is an idea that I got from Alpha Delta Antennas, uh, specifically the DXCC antenna, which was one of the contenders for the reference antenna. This is something you can do yourself. Now, when doing antenna work, I always recommend that there be an additional person whose sole job is to be safety observer. After all, you're running around with things that are tall that can fall down and so on. The safety observer's sole job is to call 911 in the event of a mishap. You can't use the safety observer for anything else because if they're busy for something else and there is a mishap, you won't like that. So then get another person to help you. You really shouldn't do antenna work alone. And in this case, I didn't. I used my assistant, Aiden, which by the way, you guys pay for him through your uh, tips, subscriptions, Patreon, um, channel memberships, all of that kind of wonderful stuff uh, helps keep this channel going. So keep it up. And this is a good video about how to make a practical antenna. So please share it. And right after the 73, there's going to be a couple screens showing how to get in touch with me, uh, where you can add to the channel funds, and a list of patrons. In this case, as of the beginning of December, we'll have January's list coming up in the next video. So, thank you very much, 73. Catch you later.